Good morning. Welcome all fam friends, families, and visitors to Holy Family Parish. Each of us has been baptized into the mystery of the Holy Spirit. We invoke the Holy Trinity every time we sign ourselves with the cross. So today, we pause to acknowledge this mystery and to give thanks for the God of life who has sent the Son and the Holy Spirit for our salvation. May our Christian life together reflect the love among the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. With Easter joy, we sing from the Gather Book number 566, O God, Almighty Father. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Good morning, everyone. I welcome you to the celebration of these sacred mysteries on this very special feast day, where we recognize one of the most essential teachings of our Catholic faith, of all Christian faith, that there is one God shown to us, revealed to us in three unique persons. It is God who has created us, the same God who has saved us from our sin. It is the same God who sends forth the gift of his spirit to continue to lead us in the work of holiness and of sanctification. It is God's ever-loving presence among us that extends the gift of his mercy. And together we call upon that mercy as we pray for one another, acknowledging these our sins. Lord Jesus, you are the only Son of the Eternal Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, the world is saved through your death and resurrection. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the source of everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. God, our Father, who by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification, made known to the human race your wondrous mystery, grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith, we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful in majesty. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Early in the morning, Moses went up Mount Sinai as the Lord had commanded him taking along the two stone tablets. Having come down in a cloud, the Lord stood with Moses there and proclaimed his name, Lord. Thus, the Lord passed before him and cried out, The Lord, the Lord is a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger and rich in kindness and fidelity. Moses at once bowed down to the ground in worship. Then he said, If I find favor with you, O Lord, do come along in our company. This indeed is a stiff-necked people. Yet pardon our wickedness and sin, and receive us as your own. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice, mend your ways, encourage one another, agree with one another, and live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the holy ones greet you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord. According to John. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord. As we celebrate this Trinity Sunday, admittedly it is a very difficult weekend in which to come up with a homily. Um, it's very difficult to put into words other than to say that God is one one thing, one, one person, if you will, with three unique personhoods. With, uh, you know, we know that God and then the Trinity is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And it's very difficult to put this into language and to be able to be able to preach on it. And so much so that even 15 minutes before Mass started, I was still sitting in my office trying to scribble out notes of what to preach about. And I just did it at 4 o'clock Mass last night. And it's because it is, it is a very difficult concept. It is a mystery that is continually being revealed among us and, and God continues to show his love for the world through the Trinity that is at work. The first 500 years of the church's history were a very difficult time in terms of being able to put this into language. How do we describe this Holy Trinity? Many of the saints would look to the scriptures and they said, well, clearly Christ himself affirmed that the Lord, the God is one and that there is one Lord alone, as we heard professed in today's first reading. And as Jesus would tell us throughout many of the scriptures, we remember that was the commandment that Christ had been when he was asked by the scribe, what is the greatest commandment? And Christ affirms, you shall love the Lord your God above all else. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. And so Christ himself affirms that there is one God, one Lord of all. And yet he also speaks in the sense of he being the son of the father and that he will send the gift of the Holy Spirit upon those disciples. Saints of the church would even look to the different scriptures all the way back to the very beginning of the book of Genesis, when God creates mankind. And it tells us that God speaks among himself in the plural form. Let us make man in our own image. And so we see that from the very beginning of creation, the Trinity is already being spoken about. And yet we still don't know how to quite put it into words because it's a little bit beyond our grasp, a little bit beyond our understanding. We can look to one another. We see a unique identity of persons, of people formed by our bodily features. We know the person of a person by their name. And so God reveals himself by his name, and yet it's that 
name that then creates a difficulty. It's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And yet what the saints of the church came to was this. At the heart of the Trinity, it's relational. It's a relationship formed in love. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit being the love that's between them both. St. Augustine would teach that this relationship, this Trinitarian relationship of this three-way aspect, if you will, is continually revealed all throughout our life. It's revealed in every one of the relationships that we enter into in our life. It's revealed to us in the way that we come drawn into the life of the Holy Spirit, into the life of Christ, into the life of God the Father. And so this Trinity is meant to be lived out in our own life, in our own relationships. And in our day and age, in this day and age, it's important that we continue to turn to this and to see how we live this out as Christians. We live in a world today where we should be more relational. We have phones, we have internet, we have email, we have regular mail, we have all these different means of communication. We have social media in which we can talk to all the world if we wanted to. And yet what do we find in the world time and time again? People becoming more desolated, more isolated, more self-enclosed upon themselves, more cast away from the rest of society. We see more segregation, more sense of isolation, more sense of discrimination. We see this all among us on a daily basis. We see it portrayed in our media, we see it in our Facebook posts, we see it in our emails. It's the call of the Trinity the call that we're called to live out in our own baptismal life, to know that we are to be different than the rest of the world. It can be easy for us to say, well, because of all this stuff that's going on, I'm just going to close in on myself, or I'm going to condemn others, or I'm going to cast them away. And we have to hear the words once again of today's gospel. This gospel has become one of the more famous ones. We often will see signs at football games where people will hold up a sign that says John 3.16. Well, that refers to today's gospel. We're not called to run away from the world. We're not called to cast the world away, to be able to say, well, I don't want any part of that, or the rest of the world can go on its own way. We hear today's gospel, and we hear that God so loved the world that he sent his only son, not to condemn the world, but to save it. And we, my brothers and sisters, if we're called to live as Christ in the world today, it's, call, it's a calling to draw people closer to one another, and closer to God. I had a beautiful example of this revealed to me yesterday. Uh, yesterday we celebrated the, Luke, the wedding of Luke Fisher and Mariah Mertz, and it's the first time in six years, in fact, of eight years of priesthood, that I've co-officiated, I guess, if you will, a wedding celebration. And so Pastor Mark Axelrod from over at Potter Church came and joined us as that's Mariah's family's church. And he gave a little bit of a talk on the relationship of marriage and how we grow in relationship all throughout our lives. He could speak to this a little bit more as a, as a married clergy than I could, but he gave the image, and I think it's very Trinitarian. I think it's worth sharing today. He said, the way that we can always grow closer to our spouse all throughout life is if we keep things in their proper perspective. And he drew out a plan of keeping God at the top, as always, keeping God always at the top. And in the relationship of a married couple, you have a husband and a wife. And if the husband and the wife are always working together to get closer to God, if they're always working as individuals and also as a couple to get closer to God, he said, we'll always be drawing closer together. That we always keep God focused as the center of our lives. We will always be drawn closer together. And is that not at the heart of any one of the relationships in our life? Imagine all the different things that can distract us from that one thing. We could say my job, my desire for money, my desire for the good things in life, my desire for whatever it may be, that can pull us away from that center of our life and how quickly that destroys a relationship in a home, between a couple, between any one of us in our relationship with friends, family, loved ones. Today we're called, as, as deep as the mystery may be of the Holy Trinity, to realize that at the heart of it is to find God at the heart of our lives, to always keep God at the center, to know that it's God who has made us in his image. It's God who has saved us in his name. 
and it's God who continues to send his Holy Spirit to guide us, to lead us, to draw us ever closer to his love. May God bless you. Together, we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our triune God loves and saves us, and so together we can pray for all those who are in need. For the church throughout the world, as we strive to share the great good news of the salvation won for us in Christ Jesus, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that all nations might live in peace, so that the God of love and peace may rule in all the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are living the sacrament of marriage and all who are preparing to celebrate that sacrament, that their union of love might reflect the divine love among the three persons of the Holy Trinity, especially Luke Fisher and Mariah Mertz, who celebrated the sacrament of marriage yesterday afternoon. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For farmers and gardeners, and for good weather as they cultivate new life for our nourishment and enjoyment, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the joy of the newly baptized into our faith, for Ariana Nolesco, who was baptized yesterday evening, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For catechists, teachers, and all who help us to know our loving God better, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the living and deceased members of Holy Family Parish for whom this Mass is being celebrated, and for all the intentions that remain in our hearts and those listed in our, in our petition book, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God of all, in your love for us you sent your only Son for our salvation. Graciously hear these our prayers in his name, who is our Lord with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. As our gifts of wine and bread are presented, we will sing from the gather number 567, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. Sanctified by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord our God, this oblation of our service, and by it make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in the confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity and substance, and their equality and majesty. For this is praised by angels and archangels, cherubim too, and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day as with one voice they acclaim. rightly gives you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, 
and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and David our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please join in our communion song number 919 in the gather, I Come With Joy.
Please join in singing our number 320, Sing Praise to Our God in the Missalette. At this time, we call forth from among our community those who will take communion with the homebound members of our parish. And we pray. Good and gracious God, look with loving kindness on our brothers and sisters who now carry the sacred body of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to those who cannot be with us this day. Strengthen all your people by this beautiful sacrament, and in your Holy Spirit, unite us together in one communion of love. Bring us at last to the banquet feast of heaven, 
where together we shall sing your praise for all eternity. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, this week we have a, a number of our students who will be participating in the annual Extreme Faith Camp up at Camp Tekawitha up in Shano. And uh, we want to offer God's blessing upon them this morning. If there's anyone, any of them among us who are going to Extreme Faith Camp. Last night we had a couple. Uh, do we have anybody who's off to Extreme Faith Camp this upcoming week from among our parents? We should have all kinds of them. Okay, so we got a couple that can please rise. Anybody else? No? Okay. We'll offer God's blessing upon them, and they represent 38 different youth from our, among our parish community who will be participating in Extreme Faith Camp. There's 83 total kids, or 80-something total kids, and so we represent over a third of all the kids at Extreme Faith Camp this year, so a true blessing. So, Almighty God, we ask you to bless these students as they go forth to participate in this week of Extreme Faith Camp. May the memories that they make, the relationships that they grow in, be ones that they hold near and dear to their hearts, but may the graces of the sacraments that they receive and they participate in, the prayer that they share, be gifts that endure for all eternity. We ask you to bless them with safety in their travels, good weather, good health, as they go forth this week, that they may return to their families full of the spirit of your love. We ask these in all things through Christ our Lord. Amen. We wish you well this week as you go forth to Extreme Faith Camp. I know a, a couple of the leaders already left this morning. They were here at 7 o'clock loading up the truck to head up to Extreme Faith Camp. And, and uh, I'll be joining them Tuesday night through Wednesday morning. So there will be no Mass here on Tuesday night, uh, the, the, the Tuesday evening Mass. And then there will, no be, there will be no Wednesday morning Mass as well because I'll be up at Extreme Faith Camp. I'm looking forward to this uh, wonderful, exciting 90 degrees and highly humid weather and no air conditioning. I'm super excited. But... Uh, I'll be up there just for the night and for the next day. So I'll be gone just a little bit this week. And then uh, next weekend, just one more special announcement. I will be gone. Uh, I'll be here for Friday morning Mass, but after Friday morning Mass, I'll be departing for Eagle River. It's Father's Day weekend, so it's my annual fishing weekend up on Lake Butazare, up north of Eagle River, so I can win that big prize in the muskie fishing tournament. But uh, I'll be gone next weekend. Uh, we have a very special opportunity to welcome back once again Father Tom Long, who will be with us for the celebration of the Masses. This is probably our last chance to be able to have Father Tom Long back here at Holy Family, as uh, I know since I was in seminary, he's been working at the diocese as the director of seminarians, and then he's been the director of clergy for uh, the last number of years. So ever since I've been in seminary, he's been my boss, if you will, and, and now he's off to begin his new role as pastor of St. Raphael's Parish in Oshkosh. So this is probably our last chance to be able to get to use him to come back here and celebrate Masses with us at Holy Family. So a good opportunity to be able to welcome Father Tom Long back again and to wish him new luck as he begins his new role as pastor at St. Raphael's Parish. I will keep you in prayer as I'm somewhere on a lake up north and you guys can keep me in yours. Let us pray. May receiving the sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health of body and soul as we confess your eternal Holy, Holy Trinity in undivided unity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Today is another reason for us to thank God. Today is Drew Schmidt's first day. You might have to come out here so they can see you. <laughs> Drew Schmidt's first day of serving Mass here at Holy Family Parish. So congratulate Drew on his first Mass and great job. And great job. Great job. Great job. That book weighs almost as much as he does, so it's good that he can hold it up. The Christian Concerns Committee will be sending, selling Van de Waals candy bars next weekend after Mass. Show dads your love with a bit of sweetness on Father's Day. Eagles Wings 5K t-shirts are being sold after Mass today. Your purchase supports the Catholic education at all, of all Holy Family students. The cost per shirt is only $5, or you can buy five for $20. Thank you to the sponsors, volunteers, and participants of this year's event. And the Lord be with you. And the Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, 
and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. In the glory of the resurrection, let us go forth as faithful witnesses singing from the Missalette number 323, verses 1 and 4. God, holy God, we praise thy name. Thank you. 